Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikey. You guys are rocking with me on Mikey's Intellectual Corner. On today's episode, we are diving back into our another Kurtz video. This is what the dinosaurs actually look like. Um, yeah, without further ado, we're just going to try to dive right into this one. Uh, if I sound a little weird, I apologize. I think I'm a little sick, or I have been a little sick. Uh, but yeah, let's just try and get right into it. The past is a vast and mysterious land that begins at the Big Bang and ends in the present, expanding with each passing moment. It's the home of everything that came before, the key to understanding our present. Here, we find the most amazing creatures to ever roam our planet, hundreds of millions of species so diverse that our imagination cannot do them justice. Unfortunately, the past can See, that always makes me wonder, like, you know, what if in the future we find another whole another thing of sediment that shows us that the Earth was, like, way older than we previously thought, you know what I'm saying? And we just find, you know, you just never know. But that always makes me wonder. Past carefully guards its secrets. While there are a lot of things about the past we know, there are way more things we know we don't know. And worse, there are probably even more things we don't even know that we don't know about. Think of the wonder of life. We now recognize about 1.5 million eukaryotic species, but there may be as many as 10 million alive today. And although we are adding some 15,000 new species to our collective knowledge each year, the vast majority of life on Earth is still undiscovered. This is... Yeah, that, that right there, that's why I love looking up, like, new species that have just been discovered and stuff like that. Like, if you ever look up um, the new species that have been discovered in the Amazon and, uh, you know, um, Australia and Asia and stuff like that, China, they always have, like, new, different, like, uh, interesting little species, like, Let's say almost like freaking hundreds to almost a thousand every year you find it. It's crazy too because we're in the year 2021. 20, it's almost like it's the year 8th or it's the 19th century or something. You know? But this is just what is around today. An estimated 4 billion species emerged on our planet in past eons. But at least 99% of them died out way before humans spoke the first words. The vast majority of all the different species that ever existed are so utterly deleted that they have become part of the unknown, unknown part of the past, lost to us forever. Or are they? Could we use science and imagination to glimpse a shadow of the unreachable past? Let's start with what we do know. To learn about creatures of the past, we need fossils any sort of remains preserved from past geological ages, bones or shells, impressions or imprints, things preserved in amber. I think, of course, if you don't know what amber is, I'm pretty sure we all know what amber is, but just in case you don't, that's just the solidified tree sap that, you know, um, comes from tree sap. And usually, you know, insects are the only things that you'll find in there. Maybe a small scorpion, stuff like that, but... Things preserved in amber. The totality of all fossils on Earth is called the fossil record, and it's the most important window on the past we'll ever have. For a dead animal to fossilize, a number of things must go just right. The right environment, timing, and conditions. And then the fossil needs to survive for millions or hundreds of millions of years, and then get back to the surface, and then be discovered before natural processes dissolve it. So it is kind of a miracle that we have what we have, and know what we know. Take the dinosaurs, since they were one of the largest and most successful groups of animals. I think it's pretty cool. See, like the the lions that were found found in a Siberian uh, uh, cave or something like that. They're like freaking hundreds of thousands of years old, but they still have the fur and all that stuff because they're so perfectly preserved. I think that's that's pretty cool if you think about it. But. They were one of the largest and most successful groups of animals for some 165 million years and are also a lot of fun to animate. What were they really like and what are we missing? In the last 200 years, we've found tens of thousands of fossils from over 1,000 dinosaur species. 
Lately, we've entered a golden era of discovery and about 50 new dinosaur species are discovered each year, expanding what we know and what we know that we don't know about them, which is amazing. But it also makes us aware of all the things lost to the past forever. Kind of makes your imagination kind of race on like, you know, what will we be finding next? Like, you know what I'm saying? What would the 2030s bring? Will, you know, who knows what type of crazy things that we'll be able to add to our, you know, knowledge of the past and stuff. And that's so cool. Imagine if we took all the animals that lived in the last 50 million years and randomly chose 10,000 individuals from 1,000 species to fossilize. Think about all the things that would be missed or that seem too weird to be true. Like the giraffe, a yellow animal with brown patterns that looks like a horse and an antelope had a baby with a long neck and two tiny hairy horns. How many dinosaur giraffes were there? Animals so weird and selected for ecological niches so specific that evolution molded their bodies very absurdly. Today, they might seem made up to us. But I mean, it only makes sense because I mean, think about it. They had literally hundreds of millions of years, hundreds of millions. I don't even like my brain came and like it sees it, but you can't really see it. See it, you know what I'm saying? Like a hundred, like 165 million. That's ridiculous. And they had all that time to for evolution to just do its thing. You know what I'm saying? We've only had what like I think all in total, total like two million years to do that. They've had hundreds. Like that's ridiculous. You know? Made up to us. We know a lot of species are lost forever just because of the environment they lived in. For example, lush jungles basically prevent fossilization as the chances that an animal will be buried here are low. Countless scavengers of all sizes break down freshly deceased animals extremely quickly and the soil is often so acidic that bones are dissolved. And so fossils of dinosaurs from jungles are practically non-existent. Today, half of all known species live in the few remaining rainforests that only cover 2% of Earth's landmass. Millions of years ago, when dinosaurs roamed Earth, jungles covered much more of the planet. Yeah, see, so that's such a bewildering thought, just to think that because, you know, hundreds of millions of years ago, the planet was such a lush and tropical place, pretty much, that, you know, pretty much we're missing out on almost everything. And that's just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, And dinosaurs roamed Earth, jungles covered much more of the planet. So, besides some insects and other small animals trapped in amber, there should be millions of species that emerged and vanished without leaving any trace. Trapped deep inside the unknown unknown. But just in general, biology trips us up. Look at your body. It's mainly squishy, gooey, soft stuff, which does not preserve well. What remains the longest are the crystallized parts of your bones, and so most dinosaur fossils are bones or teeth usually fragments, not entire skeletons. This means that almost all boneless or shellless animals are practically wiped from the fossil record. But that makes you kind of wonder, like, what's buried underneath the waves that are, like, you know what I'm saying, super, super deep? What's buried underneath, you know what I'm saying, that we can't even get to? Who knows, like, probably whole complete skeletons that are, like, perfectly preserved, you never know. Practically wiped from the fossil record. If we take a look at the stunning diversity of weird animals like worms, jellyfish and slugs alive today, we can only speculate what we are missing. Although thankfully, many mostly soft and gooey species also left us an incredible diversity of shells that tell us an amazing amount about our past, so at least we have that. Still, when we think about all the boneless species that may have existed in the last half billion years, even our best attempt at imagining them falls short. But it's not like reimagining something. Yeah, it's like we're the aliens trying to piece together our own planet. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy to think about. Almost makes you feel a little helpless, you know? Something based on its bones is straightforward. And so the way we envisage what dinosaurs actually looked like has changed a lot in the last few years. In the past, many illustrations had a bony, minimalistic look with a toothy grin to signify fierceness and danger. But if we draw today's animals in a similar way, based on their skeletons, just for the fun of it, we get the most bizarre creatures. Elephants, swans and baboons that look like monsters right out of nightmares. 
So, similar to animals today, we should imagine dinosaurs with much more soft tissue, fat bellies or chests, weird soft parts like skin flaps, lips and gums, and just more pronounced features that would make them seem like much more pleasant fellows. Some soft features actually leave distinctive traces. See, you know, my thing is, like, because aren't, like, the little little plucks or whatever from the feathers grow, like how we see over here, it, it wouldn't, isn't that pretty, pre not pretty pronounced, but, you know, you can, you can see it, so it's kind of weird to me that how that, you know, went so unnoticed for so long, you know, to where we didn't think they had that. Distinctive traces on bones that we can look for in the skeletons of extinct animals, which is where today's animals with similar features are really helpful. It's a similar story with colors. Because we know what the feathers of living birds look like, modern technology combined with the exceedingly rare fossils with preserved remains of fuzzy feathers give us a glimpse of the real colors of extinct dinosaurs. We know that tiny Sinosauropteryx had a striped tail, and its tiny dino buddy Anchionis huxley was white and black with gorgeous red feathers around its head. I'm thinking that we knew they had the red feathers and stuff like that because of the, I'm thinking because it, the red feathers left maybe a distinctive like maybe like a little pale pink or you know like a little pale red um, mark on the bone and that's how they know like maybe okay this feather was most likely a really really deep red in order to leave this baby that's what I'm thinking and its head still for the vast majority of really any ancient extinct species we have no real clue what color they were but we know what modern dinosaurs, birds, look like, and here we find the most amazing variety. So some dinosaurs will have tried to blend into the background, while others might have fielded aggressive color schemes to attract mates or to appear dangerous. Some might have had impressive decorations or colorful beaks. Some may have been striped or patterned. Similarly, we don't know that much about dinosaur behavior, although once again we can draw conclusions from existing animals. Kind of makes you think like whenever one day you never know whenever we might go extinct hopefully not but if we do in the next uh you know creature that comes up on earth that dominates what if they try what if they start finding our bones and stuff and they're like wonder how they thought you know what i'm saying they had really big brains but they're probably just you know animalistic or something you know you, you never know because maybe by that time all of our stuff on this earth would have you know dissolved and disappeared and everything else you know and the only things left are bone fragments craziness although once again we can draw conclusions from existing animals for example even apex predators like lions spend a lot of their time lying around and cuddling and licking each other and playing why would dinosaurs be so different when we first found the skull of t-rex with its mighty teeth and probably the strongest bite of any land animal ever we imagined a fierce and stupid beast. But modern scanning technology has revealed that T-Rex had a larger brain-to-body ratio than some earlier giant meat-eaters. And it probably had very sharp hearing, vision, and a sense of smell, and was in all like Yeah, exactly like they said, which is crazy, because I think like, what, like 20 years ago, whenever Jurassic Park came out, we were all thinking their brain is the size of a walnut, and if you stand still, they can't see you, which is obviously... Try, I guess, you know, you could have tried that if you want to. Well, and was in all likelihood not a stupid animal. So maybe T-Rex was a cuddly fellow that spent a lot of time playing around or impressing potential mates when it was not hungry. Likewise, while their horns and shields might have made ceratopsids appear to be natural-born fighters, they were probably much more than that. Based on the behavior of modern animals and the complex dances some have to go through to mate, Maybe their shields were amazingly colorful. Maybe it danced for its mates like many birds do today. How intensely amazing these creatures must have been. And what a loss it is to us that we don't get to experience them firsthand. Well, I'm pretty good on living with them, but it would be pretty, it would be amazing to see like, you know, all the different array and of different dinosaurs and stuff like that. I don't know, that's, that is crazy just thinking how diverse animals are on this planet and we're just crazy. What an even greater loss that there is so much we will never know about them and even more tragic, all the absurd and beautiful beings that disappeared without a trace. But such is life.
Time marches on without any concern for our feelings, and the past expands with every moment that passes. Most wild animals alive today will in all likelihood not leave fossils behind and also just disappear forever. We can do something about that, though. Instead of accelerating the extinction we are witnessing, we could become the guardians of life and preserve it where we find it. Or well, I feel like that's our, ourselves, too. Like, we can barely even preserve ourselves. Like, we're so soft and vulnerable, you know what I'm saying? But... You know. If possible, in the wild. If not, then in museums, movies, and in our minds. Because as amazing as our imagination is, and as fascinating to think about the animals that are part of the unknown unknown, it is even better to witness them in the present. The land that we actually inhabit, where we get to experience life as it happens. Alright guys, we'll go ahead and end it right there. So yeah, another great Chris video. Um, and it really is just crazy to think about. It's just... You know, how, how good is your imagination, pretty much, because that's the only way that we can really find out. Other than that, just wait till your afterlife, I guess. But with that being said, to go, guys, thank you again for joining me on another episode of Michael's Intellectual Corner. Again, I'm sorry if I feel a little off. I'm, I am pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie, but, uh, well, I was, but I am feeling a little bit better. That's why I decided to go ahead and do some videos. But anyway, with that being said, I'll see you guys when I see you. I'm out. Peace.